Well folks, it's welcome to the Totally Autumn Fishing Show. I'm down here, deep in, deep in Somerset, Burton Springs Fishery. They've got a really big catfish lake, and I mean really big. I've, I wouldn't like to say how big they are, I'll look it up on, on their website, big one. So. And they've got a big carp lake over the back, they've got a big carp in there, but they've also got a float fishing lake here. I'm going to call it just a mixed fishing, and sometimes beginners, it's ideal just to go mixed fishing. Just a regular day to get water, and I'm here, wait for this, with He's a shore fishing guide, you know him, you love him, he's been on the show many times, it's Craig Butler. And Craig fishes for everything, not just, as you know, the beach fishing and boat fishing he's been with me on. He also does fly fishing for trout and he does freshwater fishing and he fishes the pole. So what we aim to get, and I don't like, well I've had a few goes to the pole many years ago, I keep striking, I get it all wrong. So Craig is going to run through everything and he's going to go for bream or anything basically out there. I'm going to try on the inside really, really close it's so windy. Um, and he's going to be fishing the pole. He'll run through that in a minute. And fingers crossed, we get to show you guys a few fish. Craig's on the inside here. And you can see he's got to benefit of some lilies there. Very, very windy over there, but we can always move around. I think we're going to give it a little while here, just seeing whether it does uh, blow up. And fingers crossed, we get a few fish. Right, so I've got, guys, a mixture left over from the other night. Um, red and white maggots. I've got some small pellets here. I think they're four mils. I think I've got some eight mil pellets here as well. You know it's here somewhere. You know it's here somewhere. I'm, don't leave home without it. A loaf of bread. I'm going to start fishing down here. I've plumbed, it's not very deep. And I'm just going to try, just fishing, literally, over the edge here. Just to start, just here. I've seen a couple of fish. Now, there's a guy, wow, this wind is whistling. There's a guy fishing over the other side, an older guy, and he's fly fishing for them. But the, he's on the sheltered side, but the wind is probably drifting his chum mix of biscuits over this side. And I've seen one or two little sort of swirls out there. So I figure, looking at these leaves down here, you see just, you might be able to pick them up, the leaves. Although the wind's blowing in there, that's a sort of, I'm gonna call it like a dead spot. Because really those leaves with that wind should be pushed tight up against the rushes and they're not. They're sort of circulating back out two or three feet. So I figure the carp can know that and there's a good chance I might pick something out really close in. Then I can go either out on the feeder, or I can go on the float deeper, whatever I want. But I just, my hunch is, my gut feeling is, in close air. Look, you've got to be in it to win it. I'm going to be give it a go. I won't waste a lot of bait, but I just figure down close in there, there could be fish. My setup is the usual. Waggler float there. I'm about 18 inches deep. I've got a 13 foot match rod. See if I don't get blasted away with this wind. I've got a six pound um, line on there. And I've got a hook link. I'll tell you what the hook link is. It is, as it blows away, a barbless wide gate, wide gate, which I like, carp hook, and that's 16, size 16 to four pounds. I'm going to have to stake this brolly down the way things are going. I think the first thing I want to do is I'm going to get ordinary sliced bread, which, which came out of my freezer, and I'm going to be just throwing it out so it hangs around where those leaves are. I'm going to throw it out, just out there, and just let it drift where it drifts, if that makes sense. I'm keeping the middle of the bread for a float fishing close in, if nothing takes on top. And of course, when you're fishing like this with floating grass in a very, very windy day, it's gone in about two minutes. I've got that sort of feel about it that although the wind is against me, they always say fish into the wind. It's not the most enjoyable thing, but this is a lowering job. Check the drag, just seen a ripple there. Let's watch the float. I expect small fish here to be... Oh! 
There we go. <laughs> It's, it's a fly, it's a flying roach, first cast. So Craig's first drop with the pole, he's uh, into a fish here. What do you think Craig? I'm not sure actually, I'm hoping it's a tench. Uh, it could be a carp, it could be a nice bream, I have a little sign of it there, I think it's a tench. Yeah, I brought a few maggots in as well, maybe to try and sort of get a little bag of fish together but I'm hoping this is a tench. It'd be nice if it is. It'd be nice to see it. <laughs> yeah. So they're mostly commons in here Craig? Um mixture of all sorts really. Um but this you know, it's quite a scrappy little fish really. Not bad for the first drop in. Hey, well, about first cast, eh? Hey? Yeah. <laughs> All downhill from now. <laughs> I'm going to let I'm going to let you fill that net up now. Yeah, no, I'm going to as it's a carp, I'm not going to put him in the net. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah I was going to I'm going to let So you put, put the silvers in the net, yeah. Um, yeah, I might keep the tench in there, yeah. but I'm not going to keep the carp in there. Yeah. I think it'd be They get tangled sometimes. Yeah, there, I just yeah. think damage them a bit in the net. I think it's safe to let this one go. Right, guys, I've been asked to uh, film that carp Craig had on the pole. Remember I threw some bait in close? I don't know whether you're going to see these. I'm probably spooked, but I have seen carp as I've come back, right under the surface. Right down here close. Literally down there. Now you see where the grass tuft is there, the bread? They're digging around just down there, but I don't really want to use, if I can, help it, small baits. So if you look at the leaves there, my bits of floating crust, I throw them out there, they come back and they circulate around there so they don't get pushed in against the rushes a lot. They just seem to be hanging around that area so I'm going to give it a little while here. But I have seen a couple of fish moving down there and I've now put some sweet corn in. A little tad more down there. Just really close. I'm going to try just a big piece of flake. I haven't got anything on here except a hook I haven't even got a shot to take it down. I just want it to go down as slow as possible. Pinch it around the eye there, not the point. And you can see, I just leave the point clear. I'm going to flick it out there just to wet it, look to make sure it does sink. Wow, that umbrella's about to go. It's sinking. I'm going to check my drag. It's not there. And I'm going to lower it and I'm touch ledging it across. You got a better one, yeah? Oh, I'll film it from here. Okay. I'm going to lower it here. Craig's got a fish on over there. Now I've got to film over there, so. There's every chance I could get a take on that, boys. But listen. Here's what I've got to do fish and film at the same time. I'm watching this, and I'm, oh look, 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 I won't move. This carp just came up around the corner there. Meanwhile, Craig, I'll just get the other camera going. There's a fish right under me, boys. Spooky as hell. Oh, look at the swirl he made. I dropped it right in his nose. He was spooky. There's one right there, boys. Another thing you do, look, as you're fishing in close in the margins, set your real drag light and just lower the bread on the surface like this. Oh, there's a fish here. So there's no line on the surface whatsoever. I'm just holding it vertically. Well, first carp on. Not a big fish, but listen, they all count, don't they? Close in on floating crust. I just hope the wing goes down. Well, he's pulling well. It's good old loaf of bread. I put all those maggots of sweet corn and everything else. And what do you catch on? a piece of bread. Oh, there he is. 
three, two, one, three, two, one. Got it. Lovely. Well, I had a tangle around the back of the spool with this wind blew the line around there and I did a couple of turns of the handle and it just wound it up around the back here. I suspect a lot of you have had that. Next thing I know, I think, oh no, the knot's pulled tight. There's a fish on the end, guys. Absolutely, the skill factor was there, was zero. It was zero. The bread was just down there and I'm trying to sort it out, but the fish is still on, which is good. And he's still pulling line. Oh my God. It's a hurricane. It's a hurricane. Look at the state of it. I'm trying to hold the, hold the umbrella down. How, how can you film and fish and film in these conditions? It's ridiculous. Oh, let's see if we can get this fish off. My gear's blown all over the place. What a good job I didn't go shore fishing. What a good job. This feels a bit bigger, this one. I'm on the Avon rod here, five pounds, six pounds. I think it's six pounds straight through this one. And he's certainly pulling. He is certainly pulling. There we go. Just your run of the mill average carp, but good fun. Okay, boys, so the carp on floating crust is working. No question of that. And that is letting it out here and drift right in, right into the rushes there. This one's going well. I had this down as a sort of two or three pounder. Oh, really? This is a stand up job. Probably a common. I'll tell you what, boys, they do scrap in there for their size. Oh, fucking. He's out. He's in. He looks about the same size, nice. Crisp, clean looking common. Well, the wind's got us battered and we've moved right down the other end of the lake. You just can't fish up there. It's just an absolute go. And uh, we come down, I think it's pegs nine and 10 in the corner. Gonna see, Craig's gonna see if he can find a bream or tench. I put the crust out, I've got bait in here, bait out there. So I'm going to be working away and it's drifting. The bread's going to drift all the way down there. So from where I'm sitting, pretty well here, anything comes up I should be able to see it. And I've got down close in here. I'm float fishing using the shadow off of that tree there. Let's see where Craig's at. So you're fancying the move as well, then Craig up here? Yeah, I thought it was out the, out the wind. And uh, after speaking to Adam, he, he confirmed it was a bit deeper up this end. Um, so should hold more bream and, and some more tench. And were you going to stick with sweet corn? Uh, yeah, I'm going to fish uh, ground bait and micro pellet um, and sweet corn on the hook. Okay, and uh, can you give us a run through this pole just so guys know? Yeah, this is a pretty much a ba basic uh, still water, uh, commercial still water float, um, or sort of rig, sorry. Uh, we've got a, pole rigs can be brought in, in from all tackle shops. Um, I tend to make my own, uh, buy the floats, uh, but if you're unsure of you know, how the shotting patterns, you can buy a shot brought pole rig already made, already shotted, and then copy it yourself. Is that on a winder, Craig? What it is, a winder? Yeah. I... This is a, a typical shot brought um, rig here. Uh, it comes already lined, all rigged up, float already on the line. Uh, it's wound onto a pole winder. And if I unwind it a little bit here, we, we, get, we get to a shotting pattern. Uh, this is for sort of Wow, I can barely see those. Yeah. <laughs> With a squinted eye, you can just about see the shot there. Uh, it's bulk shotted uh, to fish hard on the bottom for, for bottom feeding tension bream. Um, this, this is a rig I like to use. Uh, you see, we've got a little bulk shot there to drop the bait quickly through the silverfish, which can be a problem on, on, on some venues. And we've got a little tiny shot here uh, just to lay on the bottom. And then the aim is just to fish those, those last sort of four inches or so. Um, hard on the bottom so it's slightly over depth um, so it's sort of laid on yep. um, just a little tiny bit. Uh, those shot Craig you can't put those on with your teeth can you mate? Uh, Are they done with the tool or what? No if I was trying to attempt to do that I'd probably swallow them but you, you yeah. can put them on with your teeth you can put them with your fingers Yeah. Uh, but they are fiddly you need a good, okay, good yeah. eyesight. Yeah that's me out then. All right. <laughs> now what about the pole and the elastic? 
Right. Because if I go there's no uh, reel on a pole, it's just sections, as you can see here. Yeah, you, you play the fish really by being, shipping the sections, they call it. This they? is it, yeah. Poles come in various meterage. Uh, anything from, you can get a sort of four meter pole up to sort of 16 meter pole, if not more, probably. Um, they come in sort of sections uh, like, like so. Uh, you can see this is like quite, quite heavily ground baited from this morning. Um, so it does get a bit mucky, uh, but they come in sections, probably about a metre, maybe a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on the, the make you get. And you just add the sections to to to, to the length you want to fish out. And but the main thing's accuracy with a pole. Isn't it, it is, yeah. You can you can you can shot your floats down so light, and uh, your fish could just like brush past it and have an indication there's a fish near your bait. Uh, but on the top of the top of the pole, you have what they call a top kit. This would be a, a typical top kit. Uh, comes in sections ah, and, and, you, and you can see the elastic the elastic is is designed to to cushion the fight of the fish uh, if you was just to tie some sort of four pound line to the, the top of a, a pole like in a whips fashion if the fish tore off it would just snap your line like cotton really so so this is like a, a shock absorber and it and it's plugged up through the bottom of a pole uh, if I can get this out and show you you can see it's plugged in there. There's, ah, a, bung, there's a bung in the bottom here, um, and there's some elastic there, um, up there. And the you, different strains of elastic? There is, yeah. You can get really light elastic, so if you're fishing sort of um, for small silver fish, but you've got the chance of hitting a little bit of a bonus fish, you can use a light elastic. Here I've got um, a size uh, 8 elastic, um, which is going through one, two, and you've got the last little bit here is, is telescopic. So I've got it sort of like two, through two and a half, two and a half sections, and you can see the the fine tip is quite fine um, on here, and you can see it's like a stop or something on the end. It, it is, yeah. You, you've got a bush there to protect the elastic from fraying on the carbon, so that obviously if carbon's quite sharp. Pull elastic around the top top of it. If you haven't got one of those on, it's just going to shred the elastic and, and snap. You lose, yeah, you yeah. lose everything. And then you've got um, connectors here, uh, where you can see you've got a little connector here, tied on with a, a load of knots there. Um, tie it on to skewer it and then you've got a little covering here so you can to make it nice and neat to stop any tying you can do it on there and then the rig I can just pull that back this is a pair of binoculars for me yeah. I'll, stick with, I'll stick with where a six pound line where, you, where you've got the, the rig body yeah. um, I you've got see. a little overhand loop on the end and all you need to do is a little tiny groove in there stick that over the top there pull it in there and then pull that little sleeve over the top to secure it in so it sort of locks it it does yeah and then when you've got a, a fish on depending on the size of the fish it's going to pull the elastic out and go like like so that's that's the effect of a real drag effectively yeah isn't it? yeah it's just yeah it's like your rag so it just plays the fish to it ties the fish out um and then once it swims into you you can you can net it, safely net it you know it's it's a it's it's a i love fishing the pole it's, it's a really good effective method accuracy and, and you can get you know accurately feed in the same spot every time if you're using a seven meter pole and you're feeding it seven meters you can just drop the bait on the same spot every single time right let's get fishing and see what we can produce yeah hopefully we get a tensile bream now so we've moved, moved from the carp end of the lake yeah um, let's hope the carp haven't followed us in the, the bream here it might follow my row of bread in a minute but... might do, yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> there's some on it already Is actually, it really? yeah, I think. <laughs> right let's keep cracking right, yeah. i've come back around to swim bread's gone guys so I don't know, there's nothing swirling down here. The other thing you'd look for is a bit of sort of stirred up mud as it were. I'd throw a bit more, oh I see carp down the end there. I'm a great lover of bread. So while Craig's looking for the bream, I am going to be looking for something off the surface. A little tip, we've mentioned it before. Rather than break the bread off, you can cut strips like this. I'm using a crust of bread. And look, you can get nice even bits. You don't get wasted and you'll find it hooks a bit better. So, I mean, I've baited up close in. I'm going to have to go later on, but while Craig's getting set up and getting his swim going, I might as well try and wheel something out. So there's my crust. I'm just going to dip it in front of me just a couple of times. just gives it a little bit of extra weight to, uh, well, basically, this isn't even a cast, is it? You know what, I think there is fish down there, it's muddied up completely. Right, let's see where we're going. Over there. 
check drag. Now that bread is still a little bit dry so I almost like a take to come about 30 seconds in that way the water soaked in the bread made it soft. Oh boy, that's a big fish there. That was a big fish. I've, I've lost him. That was about six that one. Where the heck did he go? Look at his coloured the mud up so this must be very shallow here. There's another one there. Out we go. I'm figuring they might like the edge of this shadow line. Can you see the shadow line? Well, um, what can I say? I had the feeling that the edge of that shadow line was where carp might stay on a sort of bright day. And there we go, hook up. And it's almost a pleasure fishing in this swim. The wind's slightly off my back. I don't think I need the broly up for the, uh, for the sound. So as soon as Craig starts picking up silverfish, or maybe even attention, I'll, be a, I'll change over to this, the waggler float. At the moment, wow, this one. I'm, uh, I'm in carp mode, just trying to catch a, knock a few fish out. Hopefully this wind blows, so we've got no more wind coming later, unfortunately. Small one. They do scrap these little chappies. There he is. And of course these on uh, Craig's pole will give them a real scrap. Up in the shadow line again guys, I think there might be two fish. <laughs> this anglers and danglers, isn't there people? That's all it was, that shadow line. Very dark fish, this one. Let's wheel him in, it's all action. And he's in. Look at that. As black as your hat is, it's saying. Just, now they've gone much, much farther back there. Some of the breads out here, I'd like to see a, a bigger fish. Oh, there's one further back there. There's a nice fish further back. Sometimes the bigger fish will actually lay beyond where you're fishing, let the small ones, they just pick off the outside pieces of crust. And I've gone way out now. Hopefully there's a bigger fish. There he is. And I missed him again. That was a better fish though. Ah, oh, that was at distance. I don't know what. I didn't even see the, <coughs> see the fish that time. I think he's pretty much the same size. A little bit bigger, common. Doesn't want to give up. Oh, he pinged off. Just pulled off, as happens. I immediately, I cast into the shadow. I've got another fish hooked up, and I think this one is quite a bit better. Yeah, it's another common. He's got the old, he's got the old Avon doubled over. He's in. Oh yeah, that's a nice one. That's a nice one. That's, that's a doer. That's a nice one there. Well, get around quick. Craig's got a, a tench hooked up. Well, you said you had fish fizzing there, didn't you, Craig? I did, yeah. I put in, uh, put a bit of some ground bait in uh, and mix it with a bit of micro pellet and a bit of corn in there and a bit of brasm liquid and uh, fed it quite heavily in the f for about the sort of 20, first 20 minutes. It was fizzing like mad and I couldn't get a bite. Yeah. Um, fed a bit more micro pellet over the top and, um, and then I had a first sort of positive bite, really, and you know, some, Quite a nice little tank. Yeah, it's a nice one, yeah. That's a good one. Mm. And look, I think the hook's fallen out in the net as well, which is a... Uh, which is dead handy. Definitely. There you go. Beautiful tench. I absolutely love tench. It's such a, such a beautiful fish. 
getting harder to find them now. I've come all the way down here. To, yeah. I've, I've driven two and a quarter hours <laughs> to find a tent. I've had a, had a couple out of the canal this year locally. Yeah. Um, so it's nice to go on the still waters and fish for them, really. Yeah, it is. It's time of year. Yeah, and in, in the in the lakes, you can uh, you can get them pretty much throughout the day. Where on the canals, you're limited to early mornings and the evenings. Got some uh, green betaine hooker pellets here. Uh, really effective. Uh, carp and bream and tench seem to love them. Uh, quite soft, so you've got to be a bit bit careful how you hook them. You've got to have dry hands. Uh, just put one on there. And put two. Two sort of. Yeah, that should be fine. I mean, not ideal to cast a float with because they just fly off on the cast, but when you've got a pole, you can just sort of like ship it out. Craig's got the tench, that's good. That's uh, taking the pressure off. Carp got a little bit slow on the top, of might try float fishing out there. He'll probably get some fish feeding there now. I've got another one hooked up right by the bush. Yeah. I guess about five, something like that. Well, I can see round the corner where it's drifting, there's ripples coming out. Just on where all these leaves are hanging around, like I told you, I've got this circulation effect on the surface, so my bread is staying where the leaves are, which is good. But I think they are actually moving down on the wind, so I might even, well, I'm not fishing here with any other rod, so I might I'll have a walk down there, just have a look, take a rod and net the map and just see if I can spot one, you know, down that side. I quite like these hedges here, they're really mature and it gives you a good sort of feeling of separation. So let's just put our gear here and just see if any bread's drifted down in this area. Wow, that is windy. Do you know what I'm missing? That's right, bait. What a stupid child. Stupid child. It's not the school report. Could have done better. Could have done better. Could have done with a brain. What fisherman goes without his bait? I'm only going like 15 paces. Let's have a look. Oh, there's something down there. Something down here. Oh, there's a nice fish. Can't quite see my bread. Oh, yes, I can. Well, I can't see the bread, it's just been eaten. There we go. You can see actually how the, the leaves, as I told you, there's the wind out there, the leaves are coming up along the inside. And that's the same distance that the uh, crust is going to go. And around that point there, I can actually see carp moving off of that point. Now, what is this going to be a common? It's going well. Small common. He's in. He's in. Oh, out. He's out. Well, do you know what, boys? I'm tempted to go to that corner. I think there's another swim right there. Let's go. Join me. As I see ripples. Yes, there's a swim here. I can tell you now, speaking to uh, Adam, he said, if there's nobody in there, I'm okay to move. So we've moved once, just to get out of the wind. And what's happening now, <laughs> I'm going back into the wind. Yeah, that's a small one. Oh, look at this one down there. Can you see this guy coming in? I'm gonna take a gamble and dump it out there. Oh, there he is, there he is, there he is, there he is. Missed him, missed him, missed him. Missed him, he's so fast, he's, he's swimming really, really quickly. There's a lot of carp here, I can see shapes moving all over. I've just got to wait for him to come up on this uh, bread so I can <coughs> see which fish is which. Chance out deep. I'm hoping he's on the back end there. Oh, and then my bread's sinking, wonderful, happy days. Missed him. 
There's a good amount of leaves and that all going funneling along here. I'm way up there, I'm just going to fish a solitary piece alone now. Because they're basically eating at everything I throw in and I'm missing them. So I just put a single piece out there and just let it roll around on the ripple on the wind. Ah, oh, now we're loaded up. Now we're loaded up. I've no idea what size this one is. And that was way at the back of the swim. The wind is a horror story. Now that's common about five pounds, I think. I really need him coming up close if I can. There he goes. Chasing it down the wind. Ah, he turned off. Second one. Oh, that was a bigger fish. Oh, I've got him. I forgot him. <laughs> I, did. I don't know what happened there, but there's a bent rod and that's all that matters, people. I'm, I've got a feeling this might be a decent fish. Very, very heavy. Let's just drag up our gear. I can't say how many tons of fish this rod must have caught. Quite scary. We haven't caught this one yet, mine. I'll get you a quick lift for you. He goes crackers. I guess. Eight pounds plus that one, guys. What do you think? Look at eight pounds of anybody's money. Well, I'll tell you what. I'd be pleased to get you tench this big. Great, great bit of sport here. I don't know what I've had. I must have had 15 or 18 carp. So it'll be soon time for me to go on the float. Well, I'm exhausted. I think I'm actually finally carped out. So there's fish down here right where I threw some, some bait. I can see the mud coming up. I don't know if I should pound it or just put a little and often in and fish the float there. We'll see what's down here with the maggots. I think I'm carped out now. Uh, I don't know what about. I don't know about eight there. I yeah. I fly rod here if you want to have a go with that. No, it'd be a bit windy for me. I know you get him on a fly, but he's had a few, isn't he? yeah, he's had he's had some. Yeah, they're definitely. The, the, I've been chucking a bit of bread in down here, but look, he's missing. Look. Yeah, they're, they're drifting uh, all down where we were. It's, it, it's, it's several down there. They followed the bread down that's I'm gone down the inside edge. I've got another hole with strong elastic on. I'm really tempted yeah. to go and put. Them. Like six foot or ten, eight foot bit of line. Yeah. And a single look on there. Yeah, that's all I got. A single look. Yeah, big chunk of bread. Out. Are they in close? Are they? Uh, well, really, yeah. It's a question of just chucking a load of bread in, watching where it drifts to, and keep watching every now and then. That's what yeah. I've been chucking a bit of ground, but I'm going to go float fishing, have a bit of lunch, yeah. and then I just chuck some maggots right under my feet, like where you're keeping it is, and there's there's, there's all colour coming up. So I, yeah. I don't know whether that's I don't know whether the tent will come in the margins that close. So I'm going to have a go with the float for a little bit. I'll try just to swing in here because I've seen some, some colour in the water just in where I baited up. They've had plenty of time to get onto it. I've got four maggots. So I'm float fishing oh, three feet out. There's a bite. Just a, just a tiny little bob of the float. I'll clear for striking up there. And I guess here in close, I don't think it ever goes to the left. Been feeding these um, uh, two mil micro pellets. Uh, as you can see, they're nice and small, ideal for loose feed. Uh, it won't over overfeed things. So I've been feeding a few pinches, a couple of pinches, quite often, sort of feeding little and often. I'm just putting a catapult and spraying it around the float. The pellets are so soft, they might have just sucked the, the pellet off. 
Well, I've had a few roach about this size. <clears throat> Maggots are impossible. So I'm trying a single grain of sweet corn and just lowering it over there. Because I know a slightly bigger roach, you know, like what I call hand size, will take a single grain of sweet corn if they're feeding. <clears throat> Hopefully carp don't move in there because I'm on, what, two and a half pound bottom. So, oh, what a striker. So I wonder if it didn't come out with a pair of lips. And of course all my shots slipped. I'm going to back that drag off because I'm virtually at point blank range here. And now, of course, I am sitting frozen with the rod and the camera running. I'm not going to get a take. The rod will be off to rest in a minute. Oh, I told you, stand up. Don't do it, Graham. Just, just fish properly. So here's a Craig. Nice bream, Craig. Yeah, he's not a bad one. A couple of pound. Yeah. Uh, so many fish in the swim. Um, and th this one, the fowl hooked in the in one of the bottom fins. So that tells you they're digging around on that ground. Yeah, they're just going absolutely mad on the, in there. Well, I'm going to throw some maggots in, boys. Just there. Follow it straight up with three maggots on the float, and I'm fairly sure straight away will be roach. So I just see the float doing this, and that's a sure sign small fish are knocking at it. See, look, one after the other. They're just small fish, fun to catch, unless you want something larger. Here we go again. There's a little bit of ice in that, it's sinking. Pay you to take, if, you, if you've got frozen sweet corn, take some out and just put them, you know, down on the grass on a lid somewhere to uh, thaw out, otherwise you'll find they float. And there is proof of the pudding, single grain of sweet corn, boys, and I know it's only marginally bigger, but it's, it's getting towards palm size, and that's through using a single grain of corn. In we go. You wait just a tad longer for a bite, but at the end of the day, if you get a slightly bigger fish, you don't mind, do you? Note, guys, where I'm fishing, just here. I'm about to plumb that depth out there where I've been throwing the sopped up bread and ground bait maggots and uh, have a go out there. Had to happen, boys. Oh, carp on sweet, single grain of sweet corn. A two and a half pound bottom. Oh dear, could be a one way ticket. Now, he's stripping me right out. I was fairly sure it's a one-way ticket and it'll break the hook link. I should try and get it. Got a carp on the two and a half pound bottom and single grain of corn right in the margin. Yeah, right in the margins for roach. I was catching a you know palm-sized roach. This would be like pole fishing, I might be here a while. <laughs> Just gotta try and maintain that bend just wind down slowly the only way to catch these fish on light gear is to just take your time check the drag yeah he's he's either tangled up or winged here what we call wings but he's in that was very lucky with that small hook quite a pretty mirror it's a very pretty car. I know it's not a big car. I know it's not a big car. Look at that. That is absolutely mint. Can you imagine catching a 30 pounder in that condition with those scale markings? Beautiful. Let's get him back now. I think I might plumb the depth on here, out here rather, and uh, see if it's a bit deeper and put a float out there. Well, I've gone out the same sort of distance Craig's gone out. Halfway through a sandwich, the float went. Ooh, 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 ooh. Crunching away on my meal, and he was crunching away on his. I haven't got it yet, though. You get a two and a half pound hook length, a small hook. 
There's not much you can do. Can't bully them like you can on the Avon rod. Yeah, it's only a small one. Oh no, a small carp, sorry. Wowee, that was some take on catching those skimmers and then got nailed by a carp, obviously stripping me out big time. It just goes to show you that rolling up those little pellets of bread and sending them around the float, actually they get stuff feeding. On a small hook though, I'm an eyed hook now to I think it's about 3.6. Stroft for a hook link, it's definitely another good carp. The wind has not laid down at all, all day. But we've got a fantastic fishing, I have to say. Maybe they like it, maybe they're feeding because it's windy. And there's a very unusual bird down there, black one. Don't know if it's a sparrow, a house sparrow or not. I've thrown some maggots down there for him, but I don't know what it is. I think it's a hedge sparrow. Some of you ornithologists might be able to tell me. Well, I'm going to click this off because I have got a way to go. Oh, it's just about liftable that one. Probably should have netted it. I'll just call it on. Little pinches of bread. I'm trying to have a cup of tea guys. <laughs> the rod's coming out of the rest. <laughs> I'm float fishing, it's like ledgering. It's just ridiculous. Oh, he's pinged off. Good as me. It gives me at least time to have a cup of tea, doesn't it? Well, if I said guys I've had 30 carp today, probably 20 off the top, at least 10, well probably more than that, might be 35, from sort of 2 to 8 pounds. It's been non-stop action all the time. I've had skimmers, little skimmers, I'm doing really well on weensy little pellets of bread, float fishing pellets of bread now. Maggots get me the roach and a small fish, bite a chuck. Big pieces of flake, carp, got to wait longer for the bite. Pinches of bread, but I've now run out. I can't, I can't get the, uh, the, chum, the chum loaf, I'm going to call it, off Craigie's, off up there fly fishing and uh, having a ball, having a ball. So there you go guys, I'm down to my last, well, started with two and a half loaves of bread. That's all that's left. <laughs> And the, the pellets I'm using, I'll show you, I'm just pinching them flat around the hook like we do when we've ever fished. Just that, with one, one tight squeeze, a little pellet, and I've been catching, I've been hooking carp as well on those to be honest, but getting the skimmers, little skimmers on that. But I've got nothing to sort of feed with now, so it's going a bit quiet. Oh. <laughs> no, don't say it. I do not speak with forked tongue, people. I do not speak with forked tongue. There you go. Skimmers on pellets of bread. You saw me actually put it on, cast it out and catch a fish. On the tiniest, tiniest piece of bread, folded flat, just one pinch around a size 14 hook, barbless. One quite hard squeeze like that. I'm just lowering it in the water. Yeah, he just come up and he took it one, missed it. Oh uh, yeah, come. And then just come back and, and have another go with it.
Ready? And that is a sort of mudler minnow type. Yeah, it's like, a, it's like a hedgehog type of thing. I've, I've noticed you catching loads of fish off the surface on bread, and I sneaked the fly rod in this morning. Yeah, you said you're going to bring one, yeah. And uh, I brought the fly rod in and uh, thought I'd have a little go. And Just had a rest, rested the uh, the pole line for a minute and uh, grabbed hold of the fly rod for a little bit of a break and a bit of a bit of a change and uh, just had this beauty. Excellent fun on the fly rod. I saw the fly line going out <laughs> in the middle of the lake. <laughs> he did. I bumped a couple off before I hooked this one and um, he just hooked and he just tore off at a rate of knots. So. A lot of fish today, Craig. We had a lot of fish. Quite a few, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's been a good day, it's steady all day. Well. All I sounds very just behind the float now and around it. All sounds very tenchy. Oh it's got the bubbles to the right of it now. Yeah. I'm amazed you're not getting bite off the pipe with all them bubbles. I know, I know, it's bad. I mean, <coughs> with all them bubbles, you know? Unless they're stirring at the bottom so much they just can't see that they're scooping up. I've had a few tiny boats in the corner, I wonder if that's what they are. I'll put corn on and I've got one about four ounces, five ounces. Yeah, they, you could get those little ones with them. Corn? Yeah, double corn. Listen, I've got to get I've got a two and a half hour drive back. I've got to get going. I've got to pack up. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it. So anybody who wants a bit of action, looks like I think it's Alder Lake, check, but I think this one's called Alder. It's the middle one here at Burton Springs. I don't know what the fish is like the rest of the time. It's <laughs> pretty blinding. 
And Craig's, before we go, we'll show you. Uh, Craig's got a net, he's got some bream. I didn't get the bream, didn't sit on them, I must admit. Craig's got the bream with that pole and he got some tench as well. We've got, got a nice net of fish to end the day, uh, probably pushing sort of 35, 40 pound possibly. Yeah, we're just getting uh, that way. Lots of two and a half pound bream. Uh, Couple of three, lovely three, three lovely tench, um, all similar size. Uh, we've got a few, a few small scrappy carp, um, but predominantly it's a, you know, main, mainly bream. And they, they have matches here as well, don't they? They do, yeah, they have ma matches. They have know, matches, so you can use... £100, 50 to £100 pound bags. Yeah. And we did ask uh, if we could put a few fish in there, just to show people the uh, catch you can get here. Exactly, so. so. That's without the carp, we've had about 40 yeah. carp. <laughs> right, let's top. get these get these fish back in the water. They've been in the net for a few hours now. Everyone gone. Go. Everyone, everyone happy as happy, gone back happy. So yeah, not a bad day. Not a bad day. And, at all, uh, and nice to finish it off with a half a dozen carp on the fly rod. Yeah, absolutely. So, spot on. So fantastic fishing, really enjoyed it. Thanks for watching the Totally Awesome Fishing Show. Hit the subscribe button on TA Fishing and TA Outdoors. L look out for some of our other films that we put up as well that are non fishing. If you want to watch them, watch them. If you don't want to watch them, off. I don't mind. I'm going to make them anyway and they're free to watch. It's really good fishing here. We'll see you next time, guys. It's another bite. I know there's another bite coming. There he goes. There he goes. He's had the bait off. What a monkey. <laughs>